Hello, and thank you for listening in to learn more about the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's potential rule changes for snook. This presentation provides background about the new management approach for snook and provides an overview of our evaluation of the snook fishery within the proposed Big Bend region. So why are we here to talk about snook? FWC is exploring and implementing a more holistic regional management approach for inshore fisheries. We started with redfish, and the next species we're expanding this approach to is snook. Snook is one of Florida's most iconic and popular recreational fisheries. Although the most recent stock assessment indicated that snook was exceeding management targets along both coasts of Florida, anglers have expressed a variety of concerns about the snook fishery in their area. Some of these localized concerns, such as environmental conditions and fishing activity, can impact an angler's fishing experience. We believe a regional management approach can address these concerns by incorporating a holistic review of ecological and human factors to evaluate the snook fishery at a smaller regional scale. We are proposing 10 management regions for snook that will be assessed using seven management metrics. This will allow greater flexibility for addressing smaller scale issues, concerns, and preferences. Using the new approach, Staff will recommend regulations based on their evaluation of the snook fishery within each proposed management region. Summaries of the evaluation are captured in each region's annual review, which will be posted online once completed. We would like to hear your thoughts on these proposed regulation changes and this new regional management approach. One critical aspect of fisheries management is engaging with the public. At the 2021 Snook Symposium, FWC and attendees discussed what makes management successful, angler satisfaction, and the direction of the fishery. We used stakeholder feedback from the symposium and other avenues, such as the 2021 Angler Satisfaction Survey, to help develop an overview of the new snook management approach, which was presented at the February 2023 Commission meeting. Twelve in-person workshops conducted throughout the state and virtual presentations online are a continuation of our public engagement efforts to ensure that those interested in the management of snook have the opportunity for their opinion to be documented. We also conducted an angler satisfaction survey in 2023. As stated earlier, FWC is implementing a new smaller scale holistic management approach to incorporate regional differences and ecological and human factors into the management process. This management approach would split the two current management regions into the 10 proposed regions shown on the map. Multiple factors were taken into consideration when designing these regions, including differences in habitat characteristics and status, identifiable geographic boundaries, FWC stock boundaries, stakeholder and FWC law enforcement feedback, hydrology, and snook biology. The potential snook management regions are similar to the redfish management regions, except for the Indian River Lagoon, which is separated into two regions. And all region boundaries extend inland, given that snook are also found in freshwater. Please note that the exact inland boundaries of these regions may change but this map represents the general areas of each management region. Using feedback from previous stakeholder engagement, staff developed seven management metrics to evaluate the snook fishery in each region. These metrics include spawning potential ratio, or SPR, harmful algal blooms, stakeholder feedback, fishing effort, habitat trends, relative abundance, and air temperature. Before getting into the management metrics, here are the boundaries of the proposed Big Bend region. The northern boundary of the Big Bend region is located in Wakulla County, and the region extends south to Fred Howard Park Causeway in Pasco County. Additionally, the regional boundary extends inland, given that snook are also found in freshwater. It is important to note, all waters of the Hillsborough River are part of the Tampa Bay region. The Big Bend region includes all waters and tributaries of the Oclockney Bay and River, with Lacucci River and the Anclote River. Using the new management metrics, we evaluated the snook fishery in the proposed Big Bend region that I just described. A summary of this evaluation will be compiled into a report we call the Snook Annual Reviews, which will be posted on our website each year. 
This slide shows the draft annual review for the Big Bend region. Data used for each metric are collected from a variety of partners and will be updated each year as the new data become available. Over the next few slides, we will examine the metrics evaluated for the Big Bend region and highlight some of the metric evaluation results staff considered when determining potential rule changes. The first management metric is Spawning Potential Ratio, or SPR, which is currently the only metric used to evaluate the snook fishery. SPR is the percent of the total biomass of mature fish in a fish population compared to the number that would exist if the population were not fished. SPR was adopted as the snook fishery management metric in 1994 and was chosen because of the high social and economic importance of this fishery to the commission and the public. Achieving the 40% SPR goal maintains the stock above the biological limit of 20% SPR and maintains resiliency within the stock. An SPR at 20% or less is not sustainable, and managing for a higher SPR provides for higher abundance and large trophy snook. The snook fishery was last assessed in the 2020 stock assessment, which determined that both Gulf and Atlantic stocks were exceeding the 40% SPR management goal. For the Gulf, the SPR in 2019 was determined to be 54%. It is important to note that SPR is determined at the stock level, so it is not appropriate to assess at a smaller regional scale. Despite the positive results, the angler experience on the water does not always align with the stock assessment. The quality of someone's fishing experience can vary based on where they are fishing, as the fishing experience is impacted by local variables such as environmental conditions, fish behavior and distribution, and fishing activity. Because of these reasons, it is important to bring in other information to provide a more holistic view of the fishery. In the next several slides, we will discuss our assessment of the other six metrics being used to evaluate the snook fishery in the Big Bend. The next metric is harmful algal blooms, or HABs, specifically red tide frequency and duration. The HABs known as red tide releases neurotoxins that can kill marine life, including snook. Red tide data are routinely collected statewide by FWC and roughly 60 partners. Snook are moderately resilient to red tide events because they mature early, and they readily move into fresher water to avoid red tide. Additionally, snook spawn multiple times each year from April through September, which includes months when red tides are less common, like spring and summer. In the Big Bend region, the red tide has occurred infrequently, and typically blooms last about three months. A bloom was not observed in 2022. Stakeholder feedback is the next metric used to assess snook. To gather angler perspectives on the snook fishery in their region, an angler satisfaction survey was sent to a subset of recreational anglers and all guides in the Big Bend region. Over 13,500 surveys were sent in January 2023, and we received 164 responses from the Big Bend region. The pie charts shown here show survey responses to one of the questions in the survey. Responses are from anglers that indicated they primarily fished for snook within the Big Bend region over the past 12 months. Results from the survey indicated that respondents had a range of opinions regarding their snook fishing experience in the past 12 months. Overall, it was mostly positive with the majority of anglers reporting their recent fishing experience as fair, good, or very good. For higher guides were more positive about the recent fishing experience than private anglers, as none reported poor or very poor. The next metric uses fishing effort and landings information from NOAA's Marine Recreational Information Program, MRIP. This program uses information gathered from angler intercepts and mailed surveys to estimate the landings, releases, and effort for recreationally targeted fish and sharks. The graph on the slide has lines indicating the total estimated catch with landings in orange and releases in purple. The gray bars represent the number of estimated annual trips targeting snook for this region. Directed trips and releases of snook remained stable from the late 1990s until 2010 when a cold kill event reduced the number of trips and releases. There has been an increasing trend in trips and releases since 2013, which is likely associated with snook range expansion into the Big Bend region. Landings of snook in the Big Bend have remained low 
and 99% of the snook caught in the Big Bend region were released. Habitat is another important metric that is being used in the evaluation of the snook fishery. Specifically, we examine the extent of seagrass, salt marsh, and mangroves because these habitats are essential for snook foraging and refuge. We acquired habitat data from different contributors and use that information to evaluate the change in these habitat types over time. Seagrass has been increasing in the northern and southern part of the region, but has been decreasing between the Suwannee and Steenhatchee rivers since the early 2000s, which is likely due to reduced water clarity and variable salinity. Seagrass trends in Suwannee Sound, Cedar Key, and Wakasasa Bay are not currently available. Saltwater marsh in this region is relatively stable and mangrove acreage is increasing as its range continues to expand northward. Trends in relative abundance is another metric that can inform how a population responds to different ecological stressors like extreme weather events and changing environmental conditions. FWC's Fishery Independent Monitoring Program, known as FIM, conducts sampling in several estuaries around the state. The data from the sampling are used to develop annual abundance trends for snook that are less than a year old, also called young of year, and sub-adult slash adult snook that are below the minimum slot size, specifically those less than 24 inches in length. FIM has regularly sampled Cedar Key since 1996. Due to data limitations, FIM sampling does not produce an informative abundance index for young of year snook. Thus, we'll only look at the abundance index for subadult slash adult snook in the Cedar Key area. Subadult adult snook relative abundance index was at zero or near zero between 1997 and 2016. These low levels of abundance are consistent with the historical range of temperature sensitive species. However, increasing temperatures and more mild winters have resulted in snook's range expanding into the Big Bend region. This can be seen by the increase in abundance in 2017 and subsequent years. FWRI is finalizing the 2022 data and we will incorporate these data later this year. The new temperature metric that is being considered for SNUC examines winter temperature trends since SNUC are sensitive to colder temperatures. In the figure, the lowest winter air temperature represented by the black line is in reference to the 20 degrees Fahrenheit severe freeze threshold represented by the blue dashed line, which is the lower thermal tolerance of many tropical species. In general, regions with temperatures consistently above this line are warm enough for snook. As long as winter air temperatures rarely or infrequently drop below the 20 degree Fahrenheit threshold, the region is considered favorable for snook. If temperatures drop below freezing for consecutive days, represented by the bars on the graph, Cold kills for snook are more likely. For example, 2010 is a year with consecutive days below freezing, and there were known snook cold kills in this region. This graph shows that in this region, there is an increasing air temperature trend with a relatively recent drop in 2021. There was a decreasing trend in the number of consecutive days below freezing from 2012 through 2020 with a relatively recent increase in 2021. That wraps up our review of the new snook management metrics. Before covering the potential regulations for snook in the Big Bend region, here is an overview of current snook regulations in Florida. FWC manages snook in state and adjacent federal waters, and the Gulf and Atlantic stocks are managed in separate regions shown on the map. There are regulations that apply to both management regions, including hook and line being the only allowable gear. Other regulations include a bag limit of one fish per harvester per day, charter captains and crew cannot retain a bag limit while on a vessel for hire, and commercial harvest is prohibited. In addition, any person required to have a fishing license must purchase a snook permit to harvest a snook, including those with a no-cost shoreline license. Those exempted from having a license, such as residents over the age of 65, active military, etc., are not required to purchase the permit. Regulations specific to the Gulf region are the 28 through 33 inch slot limit and harvest being open during March 1st and April 30th and September 1st through November 30th. The Atlantic region has slightly different regulations based on differences in light history. 
Snook harvest regulations are designed to help the fishery meet the FWC's current management goal. Now that the current regulations have been reviewed, here is a summary of the potential rule changes. For the Big Bend region, FWC staff evaluation of the snook management metrics indicate the current regulations for Gulf snook would still be appropriate. The rule change to implement the new regional management approach would include the new regions, which includes creating the Big Bend region. We are interested in all feedback, but most importantly, we'd like to hear your responses to the questions on the slide. Let us know what you think by visiting myfwc.com forward slash saltwater comments and leave us a comment. Please make sure to select Snook as a topic when submitting the form. Before concluding, I'd like to provide you some information on our public engagement efforts from March 2023 and what comes next. FWC held 12 in-person workshops throughout Florida in March 2023 as represented by the stars in the map. This recording is one of nine presentations that we created for most management regions, which can be found on our website, which can be accessed by visiting the web address on the screen. Staff have been and will continue to meet with interested stakeholders to get feedback on the new management approach and the potential regulation changes. If you are interested in coordinating a small group meeting, contact staff by email at marine at myfwc.com. As mentioned on the previous slide, we are also gathering public comment online through our Saltwater Commons page. Please visit the web address on the screen to submit a comment. After gathering feedback, staff plan to present proposed rule recommendations to the commissioners at the May 2023 commission meeting. We will present feedback that was received during the workshops, small group meetings, and online. That concludes this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to listen in if you have any questions, please feel free to contact staff at marine at myfwc.com.